The season is heating up as the competition makes its way west. First stop, drivers will test their luck in Sin City. A mile and a half track with underestimated speed, NASCAR goes west to Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Welcome to the Pace Lab, I'm Jesse Punch. Two races down and now it's time to make our way to the West Coast. Later on, Xfinity Series driver Kaz Grella is going to sit down and chat all the things you'll want to know before we make our first stop on the NASCAR Goes West journey. But first, we have all the action from this past weekend at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Starting with the first race of the doubleheader on Saturday, the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Rain washed out qualifying, so owner points set the field, putting Cole Custer up front for the start. But immediately, last year's champion Christopher Bell stole the lead. Bell dominated the first 40 laps, earning the Stage 1 win. And he did the same in Stage 2, led the entire stage. 38 to go, Justin Allgaier goes three wide, making a move for the lead but Christopher Bell manages to hold him off, proving he no doubt had the fastest race car on the track. And with just seven to go, John Hunter Nemechek spins in turn two, setting up a restart with just three laps to go. Bell still in the lead, and he holds off the double zero of Custer for the win. Seven wins last year for Bell, and he earns his first of the 2019 season at Atlanta. Joining me now is Xfinity Series driver Kaz Gralla. Kaz, you're no stranger to the Pace Lab. Welcome back. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, ready for a new season here on the Pace Lab. Absolutely, new season, new structure. Should be a should be a fun year. Yeah, definitely. You guys always do a good job over here. Wow, I, I very much appreciate that, Kaz. <laughs> Thank you. And I know you have some exciting news to share with us on the Pace Lab, but I want to give you time to chat all about that. So first. Let's talk about what we just saw in that Xfinity highlight. Christopher Bell, dominating performance from him, led all but 20 laps of the race, and yet still was critiquing himself in victory lane. Said he got a little sloppy there at the end. That's a driver with seven wins last season. I have a feeling we're going to see some more from him this year. Absolutely, yeah, and, and he definitely has the real racer mindset, which is you can always do better. Uh, you can never stop improving from a team side and also as a driver yourself. I think probably what he was referring to is his fire off speed all weekend was just blistering fast. I mean, he was really, really good on the short run, but uh, on the long run, it seemed like Tyler Reddick in the two car almost had him beat there at the end. And so I think part of what he was talking about in victory lane was probably the fact that he knows if it had gone green to the end, it was going to be close. He might have lost that race to Reddick. It's hard to say, but it, it was going to be a good race. Uh, but then the caution came out and that gave him a chance to end the race on a short run, which was his strength. So he did dominate the race and come away with the win, but he knows that there was somebody breathing down his, his neck there at the end. So he'll have to get the, the long run figured out in the future. Definitely some competition on the track when it comes to the Xfinity Series, something that you are familiar with and will jump back into in just a couple of races. Talk about the uh, new deal you're working with, with RCR. Yeah, it's coming up quickly. Uh, I'm going to be running part time with RCR this year in the number 21 car, which is uh, an absolute dream. I mean, it's definitely the biggest opportunity I've had so far in my career to get to run in top equipment like that and really get to take advantage of the resources. I mean, it's a cup team over there. They've got so much at their shops, so, so much technology. I mean, there's so much I can soak in uh, from behind the scenes there. So I'm definitely looking forward to taking full advantage of that all year, even though I'll only be racing part-time, I'll, I'll get uh, to, to really take advantage of it all year long. So it'll make me a, a stronger racer and hopefully get some results on the track and, and try to set up for 2020. This year is all about trying to find sponsorship and have success this year, all to set up for 2020. So that's what we're focused on. And you will be running that number 21 Chevy for RCR. Your first race is Texas, is that correct? It is, Texas next month, yeah. Coming up quick. Are you excited? I'm sure. I'm very excited. There's a lot to be done between now and then. A long laundry list of things to get ready for, but, uh, but when the time comes, it will definitely be ready. That's very exciting, and we're very much looking forward to seeing what you do at Texas with your first race with RCR. After finding out that you're going to be running again in the Xfinity Series, and given your friendship, friendly rivalry with your buddy Justin Haley, might have to uh, put a little wager there when you guys are both racing in Texas. 
Ooh, we'll have to see. I'll have to come up with those odds after I see him compete in a few more races, try to get all my information lined up. Got to scout out the competition. Right. And we're just going to say that Justin agrees to this, even though he's not here. <laughs> so that's fine. We'll speak for him. When we come back, let's check out the truck highlights because it was a historic race at that. Stick around. No qualifying for the Gander Outdoors Truck Series either, meaning Austin Hill started on the pole. But on lap one, rookie Harrison Burton takes over the lead spot. Burton battled the veteran Matt Crafton for the lead over the first couple laps, but Kyle Busch in the 51 truck charged through the field to steal the lead on lap six. Trouble for Natalie Decker on lap 16. She gets loose in turn three. On the restart, it's KBM teammates Kyle Busch and Harrison Burton up front. The two dominate the front of the pack through the rest of the stage, Kyle Busch earning the stage one win. Grant Infinger up front on the restart, but Johnny Sauter and Kyle Busch make it a three wide battle for the lead. Bush coming out on top. The trouble for Joe Nemechek just a few laps later brings out the caution. The 51 team crew chief Rudy Fugel brings Kyle Busch back to the pits for an unplanned stop after complaints of vibrations, handing over the lead to Johnny Sauter on the restart. Kyle Busch started 24th on the restart after that unplanned pit stop, but that did not hold him back. He charged through the field to take the lead in the final lap of the stage to rack up another stage win. But on the restart, Jesse Little gets loose and causes a pile up on the front stretch, bringing out the red flag. With just five to go, Kyle Busch still up front, Johnny Sauter fighting behind him, but ultimately it's Busch who takes the checkered flag. And a meaningful one at that, Kyle Busch becomes the most winningest driver in Truck Series history with 52 wins. Talk about an exciting moment for Kyle Busch. 52 wins now in the truck series, breaking Ron Hornaday's record. What does that mean for a driver? I mean, for me, that's unimaginable. I mean, I've only ever made 54 starts in national competition period, and he's won almost that many specifically truck races. I mean, that's, that's wild to wrap your, your mind around, but uh, that he definitely has, has a spot in the, in the Hall of Fame waiting for him years down the road from now. Yes, definitely a very well-earned record at that. And he proved that on Saturday as well, winning both stages and obviously taking the checkered flag and having to come up through the field. I mean, that, that run was just incredible. That was crazy. And watching it on TV, they showed the side-by-side -side of the regular broadcast versus his onboard footage for the first few laps of that restart. And I mean, gosh, he was, he was ripping the rim around those guys, wide open on the throttle, passing six of them a lap. It was just unbelievable to watch. And uh, that's why he's the, the most winning driver in Truck Series history. You can see what he does out there. It's amazing. Yeah, I'd say that uh, he definitely proved that this weekend uh, on Saturday. On the Cup Series side, though, this was the first time that we saw the aero package, which a lot of people predicted we might see some passing. I'd say that was uh, definitely true this weekend at Atlanta. Let's check out the Cup Series highlight. Kyle Larson led the majority of Sunday's race, winning stage one and leading 142 total laps. But Kevin Harvick gave Larson a battle in stage two, competing for the lead. Harvick wins the second stage. After a pit road speeding penalty on lap 228, Larson was sent to the back of the field on the restart. Second week in a row, trouble on pit road involving BJ McLeod. Ryan Priest made contact with the 52 car, sending him into the 37 team's pit stall. A fueler for Busher's team was injured in the accident, a broken fibula and a torn ACL. Fluid from the damage brought out the caution and the free pass was awarded to Brad Kislowski, who ultimately made his way to the front of the field with just 33 laps to go to earn the win despite being sick. That's now 60 wins for Kozlowski with Team Penske. 
Well, the new rules package was definitely a lot of conversation going into the race, and I do want to get your thoughts on that a little later on in the show. But I must say, I think the theme coming out of the race is the flu. Because how, that's all you're hearing about, and rightfully so. Brad Keselowski went out and ran that race with flu-like symptoms. I mean, first of all, a cup race is unbelievably physical and physically demanding in itself, especially at a place like Atlanta. You are absolutely working the steering wheel, working the pedals all day long there for 500 miles. And to think that you can do that while under the weather, I mean, I can't even imagine how much strain that must put on your body. But I suppose when you're out there and you're racing, you're so focused, you're probably not even thinking about how you're feeling or, or any symptoms that you're having. So uh, that, that was pretty impressive to see Brad go out there and put on a performance like he did, especially considering his wellness. He actually sat out Saturday's Xfinity Series race. Austin Sindrick stepped up and ran his car for him on Saturday. but. He had made a comment that there's no one getting in my car on Sunday. It's either me or it's nothing. And he went out there and he proved that he was rightful one in that car. And what's amazing about that was that when he got to victory lane, he finds out that now he's Penske's most winningest driver in Penske history. 51 years and that is his 60th win. So not only did he win the race and overcome flu-like symptoms, he became the most winningest driver in Penske history. What does that mean for a team like Penske? Well, I mean, Penske in itself is such a historic team with so many wins across many series. Uh, to mark yourself as the, the most winning driver for them, that's got to be pretty cool. I mean, I, I think there's no one more deserving of that than Brad himself. So I, I was definitely happy to see that for him. Uh, but that, that's something that, that hopefully he'll, he'll be able to hang on to for a long time. Like I said, but Aero Package was obviously the topic of a lot of discussion because this was the first time that we had seen this new rules package run. And passing, no doubt, we had 26 lead changes, which is crazy, but somewhat predicted, I'd say. So I'm really anxious to hear your thoughts on uh, these new changes and what we can expect to see moving forward this weekend at Las Vegas. In my opinion, I, I think that it was a huge success at Atlanta. I mean, first of all, at the beginning of each run on fresh tires, you were seeing uh, unbelievable racing, three, four wide all the way through the pack. I mean, that's not something that you typically would see at Atlanta. But as the tires wore eight, 10 laps into the run, it started to get typical Atlanta, which is what we all love about it. All the drivers rave about how the tires fall off. You really have to work it. You, there's so many different line options you can run and, and managing your, your tires is a huge part of it. So I felt like it had components of the, the new package early in the run and what NASCAR has been shooting for, but then it still had that classic Atlanta twist that everyone loves. So I, I thought it was the best of, of both worlds. We actually had Brad Keselowski weigh in a little bit about the new rules package and aero package and he gave a um, very broken down example, if you will, of what we could expect to see. So after the break, we're going to check out the new segment, ABCs of NASCAR. Stick around. Welcome back to the Pace Lap. So before the break, I mentioned that we are debuting a new series this year on the Pace Lap called the ABCs of NASCAR, where we're having drivers break down common terms that you might hear during a broadcast or during a NASCAR race. So let's kick things off with the letter A and have last weekend's winner, Brad Keselowski, discuss aerodynamics. I'm Brad Keselowski, and today we're going to go over the ABCs of NASCAR starting with the letter A, aerodynamics. So what is aerodynamics? Well, it's the study of or application of how air affects an object. So for us, it's a race car. Here's a race car diecast replica of one that I run. And there's a couple features that have very important aerodynamic functions that affect the race that you might see on TV. From this spoiler in the back, which helps cut the air and make rear downforce that pushes the back of the car into the ground to the splitter up front here, which controls the front aerodynamics, almost like a wing that you can't see. But as the car cuts through the air with these two things, it adds what's called downforce, which pushes it down into the ground, gives it extra grip so it doesn't slide around. The other thing on aerodynamics is that since we live in a three-dimensional world, it works three different ways. This direction, up and down, the Z-axis, is downforce. 
The other directions, X and Y, control side force and drag. Side force is like if you think of a sailboat. It's where the air hits the side of the car, and for us, it pushes the car left. You can see on the car it has several features that help it do that. The easiest way to tell is if you look at the quarter panels, or back half of the car, the right side one is a little bit straighter than the left one. And what that does is it grabs the air, creates a low pressure zone, which helps push the car to the left to make left-hand turns, because in NASCAR we make predominantly left-hand turns. So that's how it works in the X direction and the Z. Now in the Y axis, that's what's called drag. So the car, air has to go over the car and then back behind it. When it does that, it creates drag. Drag is the aero quality we don't like. Downforce and side force help make the car go faster. Drag slows it down. So to overcome drag, there's a few things we can do. Uh, one is we can draft. I'm gonna bring in my teammate here, Joey Logano. When I get behind another car, the air goes over his car and it creates these little vertices, gets disturbed. And when I get behind him, it will cut through the air just a little bit better. And that will help you get rid of drag. So that's the basics of aerodynamics, ABCs, starting with A. Wow, he gave us a lot of information. That was a lot to take in and, and break down there. Did you catch all of that? I did, and all of us drivers know everything that he explained, but he did a really good job at, at talking us through that and explaining it, so I, I don't think I could have said it that well. He definitely did a good job of breaking it down because I know that I was able to understand it and I learned something from that. So if that says anything, then good job, Kozlowski. <laughs> One thing that I am concerned with, though, that I didn't quite catch was how aerodynamics and this new package will affect what we see moving forward. And I want to get your thoughts on that because we are headed to Las Vegas. Atlanta was the first time that we saw that, but a lot of drivers feel like what we saw at Atlanta is going to be nothing like what we're going to see this weekend at Las Vegas. I actually caught up with David Reagan before this past weekend's race at Atlanta, and this is what he had to say about what we could expect to see out of this new aero package. Yeah, anytime there's rule changes in our race cars, there's always a lot to learn early in the season. So the race here at Atlanta Motor Speedway will be a big learning uh, curve for a lot of teams. Uh, we're going to go back to the drawing board, I'm sure, on Monday and Tuesday after we find things that we, we've done well that we need to improve on, maybe some things that we didn't do so well that we need to change in our building and assembly process in our race cars. So overall, I think this downforce package and the engine combination is going to make for some great racing this year. I think that you'll probably see 50, 60 percent of the potential that we're going to realize next week in Las Vegas here at Atlanta Motor Speedway just because the racetrack is, is old and it's uh, very worn out so the tires wear out quick and we don't have the front aero ducts. So I think those two factors will make it a different style of race than what we'll see next week at Las Vegas. So David made a really interesting point in that this first race with the new package at Atlanta was going to be somewhat of a trial process, if you will, and that what we might see at Vegas will be a completely different style of racing, but they still might not even have this new package figured out yet. From a driver's standpoint, what do you think that these teams are going through, and what do you think that we might see this weekend and moving forward? Well, I definitely think Atlanta teased it a little bit. I think what we saw in the first two laps of every start and restart at Atlanta will be indicative of what we're going to see in Las Vegas. But in Las Vegas, you're not going to see as much tire fall off. So you might see that style of racing continue throughout the run there. And I think you, you might end up with a, a kind of racing like what we saw last year in the All-Star race at, at Charlotte or like what we saw at Michigan with the Xfinity race last year. So I think that uh, Vegas will look a little bit more like that. Um, but, but it was good to see this weekend in Atlanta. It still maintained the old classic Atlanta style of, of having to preserve your tires throughout a long run and being able to run any line on the track. So it seemed like it was the best of both worlds this past weekend. And Vegas is sure to bring a lot of excitement. So I know I'm, I'm eager to see how the package works out there. I'm definitely eager to see what kind of racing we'll experience this weekend at Las Vegas because new rules package aside, Las Vegas brings its challenges of its own and you have experience there. So when we come back, I'm going to pick your brain a little bit about what we can expect to see and some of the challenges we can expect to see from Las Vegas Motor Speedway.
We are headed to Las Vegas Motor Speedway this weekend. Another mile and a half track, but definitely very different than Atlanta. And you have experience at Las Vegas. Talk to me about what, what a driver looks for when they're heading to this track. Well, it, it's an interesting place because it's one of the fastest mile and a half that we go to, in my opinion, but it doesn't quite have the grip that some of these places have, like Texas or Kentucky, but it's got that speed. So I know the drivers always look forward to that as a place that they can really get a lot of throttle time, but have lane options as well. I'm sure we're going to see the Xfinity cars moving around all the way from the bottom of the track all the way to the, to the upper edge of it. Um, but the cup cars, I'm intrigued to see because we don't really know where they're going to run. I think where they will run will have a lot to do with aerodynamics and how it affects each other's cars rather than where their car has the most grip. They'll have to be thinking about what it's doing to the car behind them and how to position their car accordingly. So I'm not sure what to expect yet in that race. We'll just have to tune in and find out. But the Xfinity cars are definitely going to be doing a lot of two wide and three wide racing all over the racetrack. It's a really interesting point that you make. I definitely agree that we're going to see a lot more strategic racing on the cup side, uh, more so than we've probably seen at Atlanta or even Daytona in the past two races. The k and Pro Series West is kicking off their season this weekend in Las Vegas over at the dirt track. So I'm going to ask you about that. Haley Deegan, she's been one to watch given that she dominated last year's race at Las Vegas but finished second. So Kaz. What are the odds that Haley Deegan takes the win this weekend? Uh, for sure, with her background, I think she's going to be good this weekend. She's going to be one to watch. But uh, there's a lot of strong competition over there on k and West. So she's definitely going to have her, her hands full trying to win that thing. But uh, they all will. So I know I'll be tuned in to watch it. It'd be kind of nice to see Haley take the win, especially after that devastating second place finish after that dominating performance last year. But like I said, they are kicking off their season and kicking off the weekend of racing in Las Vegas. So check out this weekend's schedule. First race of the K&N Pro Series West season Thursday night at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway dirt track. And on Friday, kicking off NASCAR Goes West, it's the Gander Outdoors Truck Series, followed by the NASCAR Xfinity Series on Saturday. And on Sunday, it's the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series wrapping up the weekend at Las Vegas. Kaz, thank you so much for coming on the Pace Lab. I'm looking forward to having you on again in a few weeks and seeing you run at Texas. Sounds good. And that's all for this episode of the Pace Lab. I'm Jesse Punch here with Kaz Gralla. Thanks for watching. We'll see you at the track.